Welcome to Visual Anthology Training. In this series of chapters, we'll review the various aspects of doing a physical inventory, or PI for short. You should take time to review and read carefully the supporting documents found on the customer zone. This series of training videos is meant to get you started, but there are many more very important details that you must be aware of before doing a physical inventory. We do not recommend you attempt to do a PI until you have thoroughly read those supporting documents. Bear in mind, too, that emergency pager support it is not available for questions and concerns while doing a PI. Any questions or concerns you have would be handled during normal support hours, which is Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 p.m. Eastern. Most accountants recommend that stores do a physical inventory, at least a full one, once a year, and sometimes they may also recommend stores consider doing quarterly counts as well. To assist with this process, Visual Anthology has a physical inventory module for stores to use when doing either a manual count or when using portable rental scanners. In the case of doing a manual count, typically you'll print off a series of reports, do your counts and note those counted values on those paper reports, and then come back into the PI module and enter in those corrected count quantities. If you're using portable scanners, we do have to rent the symbol CS1504 scanners. These are USB connections with a special adapter, as well as the older symbol CS2000 scanners that are serial connection based. Those are good for older computers. To use those portable scanners, you will need a current authorization code for downloading those batches. This is provided if you rent those portable scanners from Anthology. If you've decided, though, to purchase your own scanners, you will still need to purchase that authorization code, and you may also need to work with a manufacturer to program your scanners. We specially program the scanners that we rent. The 1504 scanners will hold 250 scans of 18 characters wide, and the symbol CS2000s will hold 150 scans of 18 characters wide. It's very important that you do some tests ahead of time if you're buying your own portable scanners. Bear in mind, too, that currently, currently, at least in versions 5.14, we do not support Worthington data collectors or other types of data collectors for importing into the PI module. Why don't we go ahead and get started, and we will review some of the basic components of the PI module to get you some basic understanding. In the chapters that will follow, we'll be covering more specific detail. And in this case, though, in this chapter, we'll just be covering some of the basic screens to get you a basic familiarity with what you're seeing. Why don't we start with showing you where the PI module is. If you go to Inventory Control, you see your option for Physical Inventory, which would take you to the sort of the control center. Um, there are a few different parts of the screen, and you're probably familiar with some of the ideas already. Like most other areas, like purchasing and receiving, you have this List and Details tab. And you can also see a series of records here. I'll get to explaining what those mean in a moment. Um, down here at the very bottom, of course, like a receiving and a purchasing screen, you can choose to filter out those records that you're seeing. There's your search and your reset. And, of course, if you need to create a brand new PI record, that's the option of F4 New PI down here. Before I get into the detail of what these records mean, let me get into the detail of just the basic details of a PI in general. This open record that we're sitting on, notice it's the only one that is green. It is PI number two. This is one I've just created and I've done a little bit of work on already. But let's take a look at the details of this open PI, something you'll hear me call sometimes the master PI. If we go to details, you'll see that there are some pretty standard pieces of information in here. This is the name field. This is the name that I gave the PI when I created it. It can be anything you want. Uh, maybe you call it December 2006, whatever you want to put in there. Over here are the various sections that I chose, and this is by section one. So in this case, I've chosen to do a full PI, meaning I'll be counting the entire store. So I have chosen all the sections. If I was to maybe only concentrate on a certain part of the store, maybe the children's area, I would select all of the particular children's sections and they would show up in this list. In cases like that, that would be considered a partial PI. But in this case, since I'm doing all sections, this is considered to be a full PI. 
bear in mind that everything really should have, in the inventory, everything should have a department and a section. That is important to do. That is one of those cleanup tasks that you'll do ahead of time. Um, the customer zone has a checklist that you can use to help you prepare for this PI process. Uh, elsewhere on the screen, we have the grid here listing all the different records. You can see that we've got the ISBN column, title, author, section code, section name. Again, that's section one. And we also have these other four columns that are very important in this case. You've got I and V quantity. This is the amount on hand at the moment the PI record was created. Bear in mind that when you create a brand new PI, you are essentially copying your entire inventory, or at least whatever you've chosen based on the sections. So I have a copy of my inventory here, and at least at the moment that copy was created, I had eight on hand of this official price guide. The next column over is count quantity. Count quantity is the amount I am sort of actively counting at the moment. If you notice, I have zeros in most of my count quantity values for, this col for the column, for all the records that you're seeing here. This means basically that I haven't really started to count anything yet. Now, further over, the third column is total count. Total count is the total amount counted so far. Now, there is a bit of a distinction between count and total count in that perhaps I had counted four copies of an item in one area of the store, and then I needed to summarize my numbers, maybe take a break in the middle of the day. Later on, I come across yet another copy of that item. No problem, as long as we're adding our count quantity amounts to our total count, our total count is going to be our sum of all the various top copies that we've counted throughout the entire store. We'll show you a little bit more on this later on in a different chapter. It'll become a little bit more clear in a, in a little while, so bear with us on this one. The last column I wanted to point out is the discrepancy column. Discrepancy is the difference between inventory quantity, the amount thought we had on hand, and the total amount counted so far. You can see that in the case of this official price guide item, we had thought we had zero, or excuse me, eight on hand. We haven't counted any, so the system is saying, well, you haven't counted any, so you must be short by eight. If perhaps I were to count a few, maybe six of them, I'll enter my line here. You can see that I now have six showing up in the count quantity, but the system is still saying there is a discrepancy. I'm off by two. I'm short by two. If for some reason I counted more than what the system thought I had, then my discrepancy will go into the opposite direction. I had two more than I thought I did, so I must have a positive two discrepancy. Those discrepancy numbers will become very important to you at the end of this PI process. We'll get more onto this one a little bit later on. I'd like to point out some of the various buttons that you might use for the PI process, and then I'll also go back to the list tab and explain a little bit more of what those gray records that you were seeing that had different statuses. Uh, of course, down at the very bottom, you have your typical arrangement of buttons. There's F1 help, F3 entry order. This is if you wanted to sort by the order this thing was done in. Right now, it is an entry order, but if I say sorted by title description, just by taking my mouse and hovering on that column header, see that little black arrow that's pointing down? If I click once, I will sort everything in this grid by title. Notice it's, it's actually somewhat italicized here. If I were to click a second time on this column header, it would sort in descending order. Notice it now has a bit of an underline. That means now I am in descending order. And I can simply sort it back again by clicking once more. If I chose, though, for some reason that I needed to see it in entry order, and in this case, probably the order things were added to the inventory, I could do F3 entry order, and it'll sort it back to the original way for me. If I needed to create a new PI, there's F4 new. If I wanted to add a new line item, perhaps I found something in the store that wasn't in the inventory at all, I could add it here. Uh, F6 consolidate, it's hard to see right now. This is an option you'll use if you're using the scanner batches. I'll get to the more on that one later on. If something was a bad entry and just needed to be removed entirely from this PI record, I could delete that line item. 
Take us down to the next line here. We've got F8 find line. This is something that for you, those of you who will be doing hand counts, you'll probably use this option a lot. F8 find line basically allows me to either scan in or maybe hand type in the item in question that I wanted to adjust the count quantities on. So I'll enter an item in. There it is. I'm focused on that official price guide item again. And now I could go in and say how many that I had found. Perhaps I am working with somebody and they're reading off my paper list and I'm typing in the ISBNs and the count quantities and we're working together on that. That's a case that you might use the F8 find line button on. F10 save, of course. This is the one you should be using every so often. Always save your work. It's a good idea. The next one is F11 print. This is where you could print an entire report on the PI so far. You could also choose to focus in on just the exception items, the discrepancies. We'll get more into that a little bit later. And F12 post update is where we'll go through and we will add whatever is in count quantity to the total count column. Now, note right now that only the count quantity column on this open PI is editable. Notice I can't change the total count column. So F12 post update is a way for you to take whatever is in count quantity and add it to total count, but it's kind of a finalization in, in some regard. It's not the finalization, but it's a way for you to kind of roll up those numbers and tidy them up. Something you might want to do maybe every couple of hours if you're doing things by hand or even if you're doing things with the scanners too. Um, and then lastly here we have the the final one, the one you're only going to use once on any given PI, which is Alt F12 adjust inventory. This is the one that will wrap up everything in the screen. It will change the status from open to complete. It will take whatever is in the total count column and it will replace the on hand in the inventory with the total count value. Bear in mind that this is a very important concept to know. When you do Alt F12 adjust inventory, this completes the PI. It changes your on hand by replacing it again. It replaces your on hand with total count. And it will complete everything else. We'll make notes in the inventory records to say that the on hand was edited via this PI. You'll have a track record of what went on with it. Now, if I were to do Alt F12 right now, I would essentially be I would essentially be wiping out all of my on hands because right now most of my total counts are zero. Um, that's about it for the general screen. I think we've pretty much hit the major points. There's a couple things I wanted to show you on the action menu and I'll go back to the list tab and do a little bit of explaining on some of those other status records that you were seeing. For those of you that will be doing manual or hand counts, these are probably the about the buttons that you might ever need. For those of you though that will be doing the rental scanners, the portable scanners, you're going to end up using the action menu quite frequently. When you guys are going to be downloading your scanner batches, those portable scanners that you're going to go out, scan, and come back and dock at a certain station, you're going to download that data by doing get data from scanner. That'll create a, a record for you to go through and review and then finalize it to add it to these total counts on this master PI record. Um, why don't we go back now and we will hit a little bit on the list tab and I'll explain to you some of the basic records you might be seeing here. Let me save my changes. All right, what you're seeing here is the same PI but a sort of a historical record of what's been going on with it. You can see that these are all PI number two, but these gray records also have what I would call a shipment record. There's one through five. Now, this first one, this is a record of the first few things that I manually counted and posted in the master PI. And in fact, you'll see that batches number four and five have the same status as well. Batch number four was created when I went into the master PI, the open one, and I put in four out of five copies were found on a particular title. And then I posted that master PI record, this one. That posting is what took the count value and added it to the total count on the master PI. 
this manual record is really just a historical record of what I changed. Now in this one I had actually counted a few other titles, but in particular here's this title of American Pride that I had originally in the inventory. I thought I had five, but in my first round of counting I only found four. So the system at that point was saying, well, there was a discrepancy of one. But a little while later, I went out and I actually found my other copy of American Pride on another table. It had probably been moved around somewhere. So now I am reflecting, at least in this batch record, of a status of manual that I had, I had thought I had five, I had totally counted four previously, and now I found one more. So if I go to my master PI record and I go look up that American Pride title, I will see, because I've posted my batches, there are now the total five that I counted all together. And note, too, that I cannot change this value. I can add to it, but I cannot decrease the total count, at least in this version. Those manual records that you're seeing on the list tab are really just a historical record of what was counted and posted on the master PI. Really, once those manual records have been created, there's not a lot I'm going to do with them beyond that, if maybe to double check well, what section was counted on that batch. Otherwise, they're, they're not going to be something I'm going to touch on very much after this. For those of you who will be doing the um, portable scanners, the rental scanners, you're going to be seeing something more like these two records. When you download a batch, you'll be on your master PI record. You'll go to your details tab and you'll go to actions and you'll say get data from scanner. Your scanner will start to beep, it'll download that data and it will create for you a brand new record with a status of scan. Notice in this case this is still PI number two but it is a scan batch or batch number two. I can go look at the details and you'll see here is the contents of a scanner batch that I had downloaded. Now in this case, when I first downloaded this batch, notice that there are three of the Big George title. Mine actually had, when I first downloaded it, three entries for Big George, but I used this button that was dimmed out before that's now lit up of F6 Consolidate Quantities. If I had swiped several copies of a title, I'd be seeing an entry for each one. Doing F6 Consolidate Quantities gets it so I have one title but sums up the count quantities for me. But I have not finished this batch yet. Maybe there were some other records on here that I need to double check. Maybe I realized, wait a minute, this is a business economics title that really shouldn't be in the children's section. So this is something I need to work with a little bit more. That's why it has, it has a status of scan. It is a record that I need to do a little bit more work with. And then when I'm happy with this batch, I want these count quantity values to get added to the master PI, that PI number one, or excuse me, PI number two that has no count record, this green record. I want the contents of this scan batch to be added to the master PI. When I do make that F12 post on this scan status record, it will add these count quantities to the master record and it will change this guy's status from scan to update. And in fact, if we go back to list, that is what this update record is. This was a scanner batch that I downloaded, but I had reviewed it, I was happy with it, I posted it, so now this is just really another historical record of a scanner batch that has been completed. It's not unlike a manual batch and that it's just a historical record. In fact, once I'm done with it, there's probably not much I really even need to look at again, if only to double check, well, what was I doing at that time? So as far as the people using the portable scanners, you're going to be spending a lot of time in the scanner batches. Towards the end, you'll be doing a little bit more work in the open, just like the folks doing the manual PIs. Um, if you have items that don't have a barcode, you may go through and scan 90% of your store and post those scanner batches, ending up with these kinds of records. But towards the very end, you'll probably have a few items to clean up by hand, so you'll probably be working in the open PI at that point, just like the people doing the manual, manual counts. Um, that's about it for right now in this chapter. 
We'll be going through lots of other topics and other chapters. Chapter 2 is primarily about using those portable rental scanners. There's a driver that you'll end up installing if you're using the CS1504 scanner. I'll show you how to enter that authorization code and maybe show you how to download a batch. If you're purely concerned on doing a manual PI and you don't have intentions right now of using those portable rental scanners, then you probably could skip chapter number two and skip right to chapter number three. But we do urge everybody to watch all the chapters before you start jumping in and trying to do a PI, just because we want to make sure you have all the tools you need to do this PI quickly and accurately. That should do it for now. Thanks.